Hello class, it's Ms. Augustine. So today we're going to talk about electron configuration diagrams and specifically to the exceptions to the Aufbau principle that I talked about in our last notes. So when we're doing electron configurations, we have three ways that we represent our electron configurations. We have the so-called orbital notation, and that's where you draw out your 1s, 2s, and actually draw in your arrows. And then we have uh, the electron configuration notation, and that is when you write it all out with one line and you use superscripts to indicate, for instance, how many electrons are in a particular energy level and orbital, so like 1s, 2. And then the last one is the noble gas notation. And again, that's where we do the electron configuration, but we abbreviate it um, and we pull out the noble gas so that we don't have to write quite as many 1s's and 2s's, etc. So then we have to remember that when we're doing our electron configuration diagram, we always have these three rules to follow. And uh, the first rule is the Aufbau principle, which means that we always start at the lowest energy level and then work our way up from the lowest energy level. The second rule that we have to follow is the Pauli exclusion principle, and that's the one that tells us that the maximum number of electrons that we can put into any given orbital is two, and that when you have two electrons in the same orbital, they have to have um, opposite spins. And then finally, we have Hund's rule, and Hund's rule is the one that applies to uh, specifically the D and the P uh, sublevels, where you have uh, more than one orbital that has the same energy. And so we know that we have to fill one electron per orbital before we can pair them up. So now we need to talk about some exceptions to the Aufbau rule. And nobody knows why there are these exceptions, but we suspect it has to do with a lower energy configuration. So the first one we talk about is for chromium, which has atomic number 24. Now the Aufbau principle would predict that it would be, and this is noble gas configuration, so it would be argon, and then you would have 3d4 and 4s2. But experimentally, what we actually find is that one of those s electrons leaves and fills the fifth d orbital. So I have here an illustration. And what I've done is I've given you what the Aufbau would predict. And you'll notice that the Aufbau predicts that you would have a 4s2 and that you would have this empty fifth d orbital. What actually happens, though, is that one of those s electrons, instead of being paired, goes up and occupies the 3d orbital. So it would seem that having one electron per d orbital is a more stable configuration, which means lower energy, than having them paired in the 4s. So you'll find that all of the exceptions that I highlight today follow this same general trend, where instead of a paired um, 4s or 5s sublevel, you have one electron in the s and a more stable d configuration. So the second exception that we talk about is copper, atomic number 29, again, the Aufbau prediction would be 3d9 with 4s2, but experimentally what we find is that we get 3d10 and 4s1. So again, showing you my diagram, instead of having the two electrons with a full 4s and one of the d sublevels having only one electron, what actually is found experimentally is that one of those s electrons ends up hanging out in a d orbital. So again, what this is showing is that instead of pairing the two electrons in the s sublevel, one of them goes up and forms a more stable configuration in the d. One more time, I'm going to say the likely reason that this occurs is because having the full 
uh, D sublevel is a lower energy state. And then the last one that I point out for you is for molybdenum, uh, atomic number 42. Again, your prediction here would be 4D4 with 5S2. Experimentally, what we see is 5S1 and 4D5. So here, again, I've highlighted for you, instead of a paired uh, electrons in the 5S sublevel with an empty 4D, what actually ends up happening is one of those S electrons occupies the D. And again, you see uh, each D sublevel has one electron, and that is a lower energy configuration. So now what I'd like you to do for the rest of the period is to please use your textbooks, and you know where they're located in the closets where the portfolios are, and complete the section review questions that are found on pages 103 for section 41, page 110 for section 42, and page 122 for section 43. This is Ms. Augustine signing out, and I hope to see you on Friday this week.